Steven, let's talk prospects. I'm curious to know more about this one because you have a story on him on Daily Faceoff right now about how much of a steal he is for the Philadelphia Flyers. So tell me about Mazamo Rizzo. So if you don't know much about Massimo Rizzo, he was acquired over the summer from the Carolina Hurricanes uh, by the Philadelphia Flyers for a guy who will never come over to the NHL. So it was a bit of a freebie there. And I think a lot of people were interested in that one because you look at how good Rizzo was last year, at the University of Denver. He had 46 points in 38 games as a sophomore. He had 36 points as a rookie, which if you're in the 30-point range uh in your first two seasons of college hockey, you're a pretty good player and doesn't always mean that's going to translate over. But that means you could produce quite well at the NCAA level. This year, though, he's already at 42 points in 24 games. Like we're looking at 65, 70 points this year. He's the top scoring player in the NCAA. He's been that since taking over from Macklin Celebrini pretty early on. So uh, a lot of intrigue there. He also got to play with the Spengler Cup uh, Team Canada. Uh, it was his third time representing Canada at any international tournament. I thought that was his best showing. I thought he, when he played at the World Junior A Challenge in 2018 and 2019, he was just fine. But this is a guy that we knew he could produce. But I don't think we expect him to produce like he is because when he played at the Penticton V's he showed a lot of promise in the BCHL but he he had 39 points as a rookie and then the second year he had 40 points in 37 games it was uh, uh, injury impacted but he never like blew away offensively like what you'd expect his best offensive production has come at the highest level of hockey he's ever played so you know as a seventh round player you can consider that bit of a late bloomer. I guess the one concern about maybe why he might not be the, the highest rated prospect right now is he's not big. He's five foot ten. He gets pushed around a bit easy. And his skating's not great. It has improved over the last two years. That was a huge weakness in his game when he was drafted and why he fell to the seventh round. But the skill level is tremendous. I know a lot of scouts were high on him back a couple of years ago, but were just worried he wasn't fast or strong enough to kind of take that that leaps to the next level. I'm not sure he will be a massive impact player um, when he makes the NHL, but with the Flyers now that their prospect pool looks a little bit different than it did a few weeks ago, it is someone that is intriguing because it costs nothing to get him. He was a seventh round pick to begin with by Carolina and that type of low invest, like low cost to get this investment here. It could be huge. So good chance this becomes a nice payoff for the Flyers. If not, not much risk there, but I think just the way that we're seeing him produce this year, if he turns pro at the end of the season, maybe he starts next year in the AHL to kind of get a bit more physically ready, but I like where he's going at this point. Very interesting, and a nice little steal of a trade from Danny Barrier, who's starting to build something out there in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. and especially when you consider, you know, with Cutter Goche, his hand was forced there, right, and getting Jamie Drysdale as well, and this team succeeding beyond, uh, I think, what anyone expected. So it's interesting to watch those, those flyers right now.